Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today we're going to be looking at Tough Luck from Legends Playing Card Company and designer Sam Scuda. Now, this is a deck that's a throwback to 2015, and it's one that was designed with a really simple premise overall. Sam Scuda's uh, family has a tradition where every single year they'll take a week-long trip out together, uh, and while they're there, they'll just kind of enjoy nature, each other's company, and they'll play games, in particular card games. And so Sam wanted to design a deck that would really spice up those card games, bring something interesting and new to the table. And so that was what he had in mind when he designed this deck. So let's jump into it, find out how he did. All right, starting out with the tuck case. Uh, it's a really, really striking tuck case. The main reason is this finish that's there on the tuck case itself. It's a really thin cardboard, but it has this pearlescent uh, shimmer to it and this texturing that gives it the look of actual wood grain. It's a really fantastic effect when you get the glow of those uh, kind of pearlescent parts along with the texture. Uh, and you can really feel that as you run your fingers over it. Hopefully it's catching the light, but you've got everything right down to even little knots in the wood. It gives it a really natural feel to it overall. Really cool effect on this one, and one that I've never seen on any tuck cases before. So kudos to Legends for really pulling off something unique here. Uh, now the design on it is fairly simple, very clean and modern, just line work designs all the way through. Has the name of the deck, Tough Luck in a super bright, vibrant orange color. Uh, it mentions that it's a first edition. I'm not sure there was ever a second edition. Uh, and then you've got the Legends Playing Card Company banner at the bottom, along with an interesting design of a skull with a dagger through the top and then some branches growing out of the side. Uh, some nice, simple line work uh, bordering finishes it out. So it's just some sort of lines and dots to form a really clean border. And I like the inclusion of the little bird singing a note up there at the top. Uh, so really nice front. It is uh, the f what, what I would call the front design is actually on what's traditionally the back of the tuck case. You can tell because of the notch cut out here so it opens from this side. That's usually the back of the tuck, but this one has it reversed. Uh, on the sides, you get a little bit more of that line work design and the wood patterning continues on this side and all the way around the tuck. Uh, on this side, you've got a couple of sword slash pencil. So hilt of a sword with the tip of a pencil. And then uh, two of those are pointing to a die in the center. And then same thing on the other side. Bottom has some ad copy mentions, Sam, as well as the fact that these are printed in Taiwan. Uh, Legends actually prints their decks at the same factory that Expert Playing Cards uses in Taiwan. And then on the top, just mentions these have the diamond finish uh, that Legends uses and then that they're poker sized cards. And then you have this little kind of eye design here that wraps around the corner of the box. Uh, here on the back, you have a preview of the back design of the cards. It's all done in black and white. We'll see in a second that there's a much more vibrant color scheme that's used on the actual cards themselves. But here's a little bit of a preview and we'll look at more details in a second. And then as you open it up, nothing printed here, just kind of an oversized flap where you can really get a good look at that texturing and nothing printed on the inside. I mentioned before, this is a really thin tuck case, uh, almost to the point that it feels fragile, like it's gonna rip. I wish they'd used a bit of a sturdier stock, but really uh, unique and creative effects that are created on this one. So can't complain too much, great tuck case. All right, so that's the tuck. Let's take a look at the cards. We'll start with the back design. And here it is, same artwork that we just saw on the back of the tuck case, but now done in a super bright orange. Really only two colors or three colors, I guess, used primarily in this deck and that's the orange, white, and black. And so here we get a really heavy hit of orange with just some really clean, even line work going all the way around. It has a lot of different kind of seemingly random elements through. You've got the eye with a globe in the center as the pupil. You have a couple of crowns and arrows, and then just lots of different sort of random uh, details and swirls going all the way around the back design of this card. You have the four suits in the corners, which keeps it from being a two-way back design. A little bit annoyed by that, but can't complain too much. And then it finishes out with kind of a medium white 
poker border. All right, looking at the extra cards you get, you get just a couple of jokers. Uh, they both feature this jester riding a unicycle and juggling three balls up in the air. Uh, only difference is gonna be in the colors. On the black joker over here, you have it just done in black and white, all uh, line work. It says the Joker Legends Playing Card Company at the bottom. And then the other one adds in some color. So you get that orange making an appearance again, and then a mixture of gold and silver metallic inks on here. Really like how those glow in the light. So there are the two jokers that you get. Uh, the number cards on this one are pretty straightforward overall. So not too much done with the number cards. You do get some slightly custom pips, uh, slightly custom index in the corner, kind of a more modern, thinner font. Uh, matching with the design used on the rest of the deck, but otherwise pretty standard, nice, easy to use cards as you'd expect for something that was designed for gameplay. Get a little bit of custom layout to kind of fill in some of that empty space on these, uh, on the higher numbers, but nothing too special. Uh, the red, the traditionally red cards are kind of that more vibrant orange again. So keeping in theme with the rest of the deck, hearts, diamonds, and into the spades. So that's the number cards, nothing too special there. But where this deck really shines is in the aces and most especially the quartz. So we're gonna get into those next. Now, all four of the aces are what I would consider power aces. So they all feature this nice large pip in the center. You've got some detailing of silver ink in there, some silver metallics. Uh, forming the accents, so you've got like a couple of eyes and then an eye of providence at the top here on the club. And the banners that you see wrapped around kind of give you a little bit of a hint of the theme that's gonna follow on the core card for that suit. But let's take a look at what I mean, starting with the clubs here. It just says, the pursuit of knowledge and enlightenment is its own reward. So the pursuit of knowledge and enlightenment. And with that, let's get into the courts and find out what that's all about. And this is, prepare uh, for what I think is the best part of this entire deck, and that is these fantastic courts. Now they are obviously completely redesigned. Uh, there's some elements in there, whether it's in the style of a hair or in some cases wearing a crown, uh, that mark these as inspired by traditional courts, but they are completely reimagined. Beautifully done in this full edge-to-edge -edge printing, and they feature the court cards sitting in scenes that are just absolutely wonderful and detailed. Now these are all gonna be in keeping with that theme of knowledge and enlightenment. And so take a look here at the Jack, for example, you've got a scholar complete with a mortar board in place of the traditional crown. And he's sitting reading a book in a library. Tons of details, even the chair that he's sitting in, the book that he's reading, you can see whether it's math equations or uh, chemistry notations that are on his clothes there. And then the library in the background with the globe, just so much detail going on in this one. I love the color schemes that are used too. Lots of hits of that orange that we've seen everywhere. And then little accents of silver metallic ink, such as on these clubs over here or on the continents on the globe. Really just set this off, make for a really fantastic design i love how large and expansive these feel on the cards you do get a nice custom club pip there in the corner i wish they'd use this on all the cards i think that's a really cool looking line art club pip and then as you go to the other ones we continue that knowledge theme so the queen features an astronomer uh, really nicely done there i love the kind of space themes going in the background and the king features someone playing chess. And in fact, he used the reflected element here to kind of depict two kings playing against each other. So you've got the black king on one side and the white king on the other. Really kind of clever use of the two sides to the court card there. So this is, this is one of my favorite cards in the deck. I, I like this one a lot. So there are the three club courts, but that's not all. We have three more suits to go. So we'll go into the diamonds. And like I said, we'll get a hint on the theme for each one. So here's the diamond pit. Uh, a little bit uh, of a change here in the color scheme. So before where we saw silver inks, the red cards use gold to contrast against the red. So you've got some gold metallics here with these kind of sheaths of 
wheat on either side. And then here's the uh, saying on this one, who sows virtue reaps honor. So some of the more honorable characters maybe are gonna be depicted here on the diamonds. And we'll see that starting with the Jack of Diamonds featured as a sailor, one side holding an anchor, the other one holding a ship's wheel. Lots of gold ink in place of where we saw the silver before. And again, just a fantastic scene. I love the facial expressions that are added on this one. You really see it there in the Jack of Diamonds with the hardened uh, sailor, maybe not quite fitted for his eye patch yet. So there is the Jack of Diamonds. It's a little bit of a Popeye look in his face to me. Uh, the Queen of Diamonds features another noble character, a nurse. Uh, so beautifully done. I don't know if it's a nurse or a doctor. I'm assuming a nurse. I think that's the hat is recognizable for that. Uh, but lots of different elements uh, on one side. And then on the other side, you have uh, the stethoscope and the mask and the syringe. So I'm not sure if this is meant to be two nurses or a nurse and a doctor or what the uh, what the depiction is, but lots of little details all the way through. Uh, you've got the staff on the side, one of the traditional signs of medicine, that staff with a snake wound around it, pills, all sorts of details. And then the king features a really noble military officer. You can see all the regalia, the medals pinned to his jacket, the sheathed and unsheathed sword running down the sides. Really beautiful. So there are the diamonds. Uh, next up, we go to the hearts. So our theme for this one, we're gonna go to a little bit of a darker theme. So on this one, we've got milk, honey, blood money. And we're gonna look more at some of the criminal elements of the world. And so as we turn to the first of the courts, uh, we have a pimp here. It's a really interesting one. Uh, you've got him complete with the stereotypical cane, flashing some cash, the big gold chain, and just this sort of ostentatious outfit. Really dramatic look through this one. I love the hat with the feather and just the flow you get on this card. So there's the Jack of Hearts. Uh, the Queen of Hearts features a woman who maybe could have been in like a burlesque show or something, complete with fishnet stockings and smoking the long-handled cigarette. Very nice. And the King of Hearts features a traditional gangster, kind of Godfather style, complete with the Tommy gun raised in the air, cigar in hand. Uh, other side has a pistol, so just a really nice, you got the city in the background, the smoke swirling around. Really, uh, really like this one. Nice contrast to some of the other ones that we've seen. There's the King of Hearts. And last but not least, we get to the spades. So a little bit more detail added on the spade pip. In addition to the large spade, you have the name of the deck mentioned at the bottom. And the saying on this one, nothing lasts forever, nothing ever ends. Interesting one. So this one is gonna look at just some sort of contrast between things that are permanent or things that are ephemeral uh, and, and kind of looking at that duality through here. Uh, and so the first one we have you know, one way to kind of leave yourself eternal is through your music. And so you have a bard that's depicted here playing on his instrument. And interestingly, you've got kind of the two different sides uh, reflecting kind of the dual nature here. So traditionally the Jack of Spades is one of the one-eyed Jacks. And so here you have the Jack facing one direction, showing only one eye, just like you'd see in a traditional deck holding his instrument. And then on the other side, we went very literally to a one-eyed Jack. You have the same one, he's kind of turned towards us, but this time we can see that the raven that's sitting up there has kind of plucked his eye out. So he's got the bloody eye patch on the other side. Kind of a dark theme, but interesting. Uh, the Queen of Diamonds, this is probably my favorite card in the entire deck. Really beautiful. You have just sort of looking through age and through time and kind of reflections of what's to come depicted. So on one side, you have a young lady. Uh, she's got, you know, kind of the writing, she's writing on a piece of paper on the sides, but off to the side, you can see an interesting reflection of her future. So there's the lady and then her as an old woman, kind of the, her future looming in front of her. And as we go to the other side, we get an even darker depiction. We have an older lady uh, you know, so a senior and in her future looming is her eventual death. So very interesting statement there. And I like this one in her hands. Uh, she has a baby in her hands. So it's kind of from the young to the old to the eventual death and kind of all those generations depicted there. And then last but not least, we have the noble king of spades. 
lots going on in this one, lots of different sort of symbolism and everything going on. But you have a live king on one side, a dead skeletal king on the other side, and then lots of elements that both hint at living and dead. For example, you have the skeletal hand on the live king side holding the key, or on this side, the live hand holding a lock. And then in the middle, you have an hourglass with both a live and a skeletal hand on it as well. Really interesting, lots of symbolism to unpack on this one as well. So that is the quartz on this one. And like I said, really just absolutely fantastic job done on this one. Uh, as far as handling, this is done with the diamond finish from Legends. It's a really kind of slippery finish, very thick, snappy cards. Uh, they handle okay. Uh, the fans, not bad. Uh, a little bit on the clumpy side, but for handling, shuffling for gameplay, definitely going to work pretty well. Uh, it is a little bit, like I said, of a stiffer deck, so if you want to use this in springs or something, it's going to be a little bit harder to move around. That said, uh, handles well enough for sure for gameplay, which I think was the intention on this one. Now that said, as far as uses of the deck, uh, it's interesting because I think it was designed for gameplay, but it has a one real fatal flaw, actually a couple of fatal flaws that make it harder to use for gaming. Uh, one is one that came from Legends itself, and it's one that I can't really reproduce myself, but it's one they claim, which is the process they use for the inks. They claim that the ink can kind of come off on your fingers. Does not for me. Um, you know, I'm not getting any ink uh, getting removed, but I don't know if that's going to happen with uh, heavy use, which you're obviously going to have with gameplay. So a little bit of a flaw. And then the second one is those edge to edge designs on the court cards. What that means is the ink is gonna bleed through to the side. And when you look at it from the side here, you can actually see where those court cards are in the deck. Definitely a bit of a flaw if you wanna use this for gameplay. So while I think it's a good design for gameplay, there's a couple of flaws in it, which means that this deck for me really is just one that you wanna have in your collection. Beautiful artwork to appreciate absolutely unique tuck case and uh, court cards all the way through. Uh, art and collection is really gonna be where this is at. One that I absolutely recommend adding to your collection if you are really into kind of interesting and unique decks the way I am. Uh, it's a little bit harder to find, a thousand deck limit on these, uh, and you'll have to kind of dig around to look for one, but if you find one, I absolutely recommend snapping one up. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this look at Tough Luck from Legends Playing Card Company and designer Sam Skuna. Um, make sure you subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings and let me know what else you want to see. Thanks for watching and I'll see you for the next one.